the best AI renderer for CAD software has just gotten even better, right? So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dev, and in this video, we are gonna be taking a look at the various plugin again, and in terms of its updates, right? This is a fan favorite uh, video on the channel, especially with this plugin. It does have some really cool features that I wanna show you guys, so we're gonna get straight into it. The first one is this geometry override slider, right? So uh, this is actually a really cool feature because say if you do want your AI render to be based almost exactly what's on your viewport, then you can have low geometry override, right? And then say if you want it to actually give you a bit more ideas, a bit more suggestions and actually override your image, well then you can say high geometry override. So now you're in control in terms of how much your AI render is gonna be based on what's in your viewport and in terms of like aspirations, right? Another cool feature is render selection. This feature makes this tool so much more usable, right? So as you can see here, let's say if there's part of an image that you wanna regenerate because you like the overall base that was generated, but well you can now select this part and you can either give it a different prompt or you can choose to re-roll this specific part, right? It's almost like this Photoshop gener generative fill and I find this absolutely amazing. It makes this plugin a lot more usable. This is something a few people have wanted for a while, especially in case you have these kind of weird AI glitches or you just wanna choose a specific part now you can do so directly in various and your CAD software. The next part is this render same seed feature. So for those of you that don't know how these AI renderers work in terms of you feed it one prompt and you get loads of different results, that's because it's using a different seed every time, you know, kind of randomizing it. But let's say if you want to give two different prompts but make them share the same seed so they actually generate a somewhat similar image as you can see here. Uh, now you can actually specify the random, now you can specify the seed that was used instead of randomizing it. So at least these two different prompts share a similar base, right? And last but not least, they have introduced a web app to this tool. So let's say if you wanna use various outside of uh, Revit, SketchUp or Rhino, and you have this hand-drawn sketch here, well now you can upload it to the various web app and you can make use of these AI render capabilities, right? So in this video, we are gonna be taking a look at the plugin for both Revit and SketchUp, and of course this web app tool. If you guys do enjoy the video, I'd very much appreciate if you can leave a like, and let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in Revit, okay? So in order to launch the plugin, what we need to do is go to the Evolve Lab tab, and then we're gonna press start on various AI, okay? So one thing you're gonna notice is that the UI has changed, right? I think they've done a really good job on the UI. So here we have two tabs, the Compose tab, and this is where you're obviously gonna start, you know, producing your various render. And this is the Refine tab, and this uh, you can only access when you've got a rendered image and you wanna refine it by, you know, rendering a specific selection. So one thing I wanna show you is that they've got the geometry override and material override. They've also increased the width, I believe. As you can see, you know, this is fairly responsive now. And they've also increased the max limit, right? I think before it was like 1366, but now it goes all the way to 2000, uh, I guess 2500 if you want it there. But for now, I'm gonna leave it at 1344. They've also updated this uh, UI here. So it's more like tags instead of checkboxes. I think overall it's a lot cleaner. Here you, have your pro here you have your prompt that you can enter and your prompt strength. So here you have your seed and you can leave it at automatic or let's say if you do like a specific seed that you've generated from the past, then you can obviously turn on the seed and enter the number, right? Okay, and for our first test, I'm actually just gonna use like the default settings that they have here in various. So I'm just gonna increase the width a bit. Okay, there we go. And now for the prompt, I'm gonna paste the previous one that I've used. I'm gonna say it's a modern timber house with glazing, background winter forest garden, and it's got a clear blue sky, right? Everything here is by default. I'm just gonna increase the number of renderings to two. I'm gonna hit render and let's see what we get straight off the bat. Okay, so here's the images that we produced, right? So here we have our first one and then we have our second one and then we can see on this eye, we can see what was actually on our CAD viewport, right? As we can see, it's following our scene okay, but it is overriding it quite a bit. So what I wanna do on this test is actually put geometry override all the way down to 15, right? And then I'm gonna do material override to let's say something like 60. So I'm just gonna leave everything the exact same and now I'm gonna hit render, and now let's see what we get. Wow, okay, this is just the first image generated, but look how much better that looks already, like the way this is following here. I mean, that's actually very impressive. Like literally all I've tweaked is these two sliders, and then we can see how much of an impact it has on the results already, right? So let's see what we get for our second image. Wow, okay, even better, I guess. Okay, so as you can see, these are the two images that we've had here. Uh, these are the first two images that we generated from the beginning, right? And one thing that I like that they've done now is that if you go back to your previously generated images, look, you can see the settings that you actually use for them. And even if you change the prompt, you're gonna be able to see what you've actually used on previous ones, right? So here, as you can see, you know, our, it says that our geometry override was 15 and 60. So at least we know if you wanna refer back to these, what our previously used settings was, right? Really useful. But look at this, look how well this actually respects our, you know, our CAD model, right? Like this is insane now. It's even got these little railings here. Maybe here it's messed up a little bit on this, but on this next one, it's even started to pick it up a bit more. Like this is absolutely insane. Like to me, this is absolutely mind blowing, right? Like 
I think if you did try hard enough, you would notice that this is an AI rendered image, but look how quickly we were able to generate a photorealistic image, right? You are able to fix it in Photoshop and even in Virus, which I'll show you in a bit. But to me, this is absolutely insane. Okay, and the next feature that I want to show you guys in Virus is this Refine tab, right? So one thing I want to mention straight off the bat is that right now, while I'm making this video, is that the Refine tab is a little bit buggy, right? So hopefully when I upload this video or whenever you guys try this, uh, this will be updated. I spoke to the owner and essentially right now, if you want to try the Refine tab, it's best that you actually work on an image that has the default width and height, right? So that's 768. Like I said, hopefully in the future, this is going to be ready for you guys when the video is uploaded. But on the Refine tab, what I can do is I can click on any image that I've previously generated and what I can do is if I hit this cancel button here you can see there's this little um, pen tool up here right and it says start draw a new shape so if you click on it once you start creating these points okay and then if you click on it again it's closed or you can regenerate or you can actually generate a shape like a lasso just by holding down your mouse there you go and now you can do something like this okay so now I can generate something here if I want so over here for my prompt let's say if I just want to render this specific part of the image again or if I want to give it a different material so over here, let me say concrete cladding, okay? And I'm gonna do with windows. So same geometry override, same material override. I'm just changing the prompt. I'm just gonna hit render selection. And now let's see what we get. Okay, we're done with the renders. The second one actually didn't work how I wanted it to, but look at the first render that we got. All right, I'm just gonna hit close here. Look how amazing this is, right? So here was our base image, okay? This is the one that we take one from Virus and we drew the um, render selection part. And now we said, hey, can you make this house have concrete cladding? And look at that, right? The entire base of the image was entirely the same, but now we can actually choose which parts we want to re-render, right? And this is so useful because obviously if we wanted to describe the scene entirely through the prompt, it would be almost impossible for Virus to get it right. You know, if I went to it and said, hey, can I have the left part of the house in timber? I can have the right part of the like bunker almost now. I guess it's a bunker to be in concrete. It definitely wouldn't have got it right. But now you can assign different materials and different prompts to different parts in your scene, right? To me, this is an absolute game changer. Like, this is like almost having Photoshop generative fill directly in the CAD software, right? So you have an AI generated render. And now you can even choose which parts to fix even within this AI renderer. This is really, really useful. I'm sure you guys are going to have lots of fun with this plugin. I guess this is it for the Revit section. I'm going to see Virus and SketchUp now. And one more thing that I want to mention to you guys is that I've actually created a Discord community. So this is for architects that are interested in the tech space. So over here, you can literally just talk about uh, your work. You can, uh, you know, chill out while you're working here, uh, see what other people are posting. You can even uh, request uh, videos that you want me to make, uh, whether it's Revit tutorials or any other AI topics. You can even ask others for help, you know, whether this is based off stuff of my tutorials or other tutorials, feel free to help each other out. And like I said, you can just post your work here, work in progress, just a place to chill while you're doing your architectural work. So the link for this is down below in the description. Okay, so here we are in SketchUp. I've used the scene before. This is a model that I've downloaded, which I'll link in the description down below. But as you can see, the scene isn't too complex. It does have some basic geometry here. Uh, like I said, it's not really populated with much, but decent SketchUp scene, enough for Virus to work with. So in order to launch Virus, we're just gonna click on this little icon here, and then we are launching Virus for SketchUp, okay? Okay, so here we have the preview. The UI is exactly the same as in uh, Revit and SketchUp. There's something they made consistent now. And I'm going to put geometry override down to 15. I think between 50 and 20 is what I found the best and material override to be something like 60. So for the prompt, I am gonna use this one, which I've copied before. So it's a render of a cafe with a glass curtain wall facade, uh, black steel frame mullions, curved roof in uh, black metal, sunny afternoon, and the background's a field of green grass with trees, okay? So for this one, uh, I think I'm gonna leave it, let's increase the width a bit, okay? 960, let's also, yeah, let's leave it at 960. Number of renderings to two, and I'm gonna say Turbo Nature. So let's hit render and see what we get in SketchUp. Wow, okay, this is the first render that I've got. And to be honest, this almost looks like a bit of a Photoshop render of like a Lumion product, which is very impressive. Minus the glass reflections, of course, right? I mean, it is very convincing until you start looking at it a bit more. Okay, and this one got even better. I mean, oh my God. So look, if we look at that, look at that, right? How well is that following the geometry? That is absolutely insane to me. I mean, minus this person, I think it is a bit weird on this person, but I didn't even mention that these were steps and look, is incorporated into it, right? And now let's click on the next render, which got even better somehow, like especially for the glass reflections. This is absolutely insane that Virus is now able to produce these type of renders. Uh, like I, I haven't even said that was a road, but I mean, yeah, these. Let me know if you guys are actually using this plugin. I mean, I want your genuine like feedback on it. 
Do you think overall that it's a bit of a gimmick right now? To me, the features that they're implementing and that the rate that they're doing is absolutely, you know, it's insane. I keep saying that, but it's insane. But I think this is the stuff that you need to make it usable, right? Especially in terms of uh, the geometry overrides, you know, to be able to actually tweak renders, uh, the refine option within the actual AI rendered image. And then all this control that you have, uh, they're producing new features like the web app. I don't know. Let me know if you guys are using it. I am genuinely curious. Okay, so here we are in SketchUp again, but I've got a different scene example. So as you can see, it's a very simple uh, massing example. And this is something you're probably gonna use in SketchUp quite a bit, right? The previous example had, I won't say a lot of high detail geometry, but it had some decent 3D things for SketchUp. But now this is simple massing. Let's see how well Virus will handle this render with the new features, right? So for this prompt, I'm gonna say it's a hyper-realistic series of individual houses surrounded by a communal garden. It's got a landscape design with stone paths. It's got a tall grass, a red brick facade with large windows, a sunny weather, and it's in a green field with background trees, right? So as before, I'm going to leave the geometry override to 15, and let's do the material override to say something like 60. I'm leaving these by the default because I want to refine this later on. And yeah, I'm just gonna do number of renderings to two. Let's see what we get. I mean, right off the bat, this is what we get. And, you know, I mean, believe it or not, that is following the Geometry actually very well. Like the fact that I knew all of these were windows, if I look at the scene a bit more in detail, is actually very surprising. But if I want the material override to be a bit better, and let's do, uh, to be honest, how else can I describe the scene a bit more? A bit lost for words. Over here, I'm also going to do uh, lake of water because I see some blue stuff there. Is that visible? Yeah, it is. Okay. So let's hit render again and see what we get. Okay, so a bit better overall. I mean, it's definitely looking a bit more realistic when I include, when I increase the material override a bit more. So, uh, you know, it's able to change the aesthetic quite a bit more. I'm actually gonna put that to 90. And overall, I mean, if you got that from that within two seconds, I'd be pretty happy, wouldn't you? I mean, it's even made that part grass and that part stone. Obviously, you are going to have to, you know, look at the way you model, how you model some things in the SketchUp with this tool, or maybe refine it a bit. But overall, I'm just going to hit, if I go to the Refine tab now, uh, and let's say if I just want to re-render these houses, right? Let's say I'm happy with the landscape. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, or let's say if I just want to re-render these houses in front, because it's a different mass. I guess this is a good example of it, right? It's a different mass here. So you probably want this part to have its own unique identity, and maybe this part. I don't know, I'm just making up some architecture stuff now. But let's see what we get. Nice, okay, so here, as you can see as we go along, so our base has been followed the same, right? And now look at this, we've actually changed the aesthetic of it. This, I'm gonna play with a bit more to be honest. But okay, so as you can see, these were like, okay, so as you can see, this was the first results, right? And then I actually ended up playing with a bit of prompt, so maybe these ones were red brick, and that's really cool. But then afterwards, I started saying, hey, can I have a white brick or multicolored ones? And look at this, the entire base are the same, but these are the only houses that change. This is a really useful feature in SketchUp. Like, look at that. Hey, maybe you want the houses to be white, okay? But it's still following the geometry. Like, I know if you model this, you could easily swap the texture, but guess what? I didn't model it accurately, right? This is all I've got. And through, you know, various reading this geometry and a bit of text prompt, I was able to keep the geometry somewhat the same and change the bricks. So this is actually really surprising because this is something that people have been asking for in terms of, hey, can I keep the image base the same? Can I keep the geometry the same? But can I re-render different stuff, right? This is, as you can see here, I mean, I haven't tried it through all the different examples, but it is delivering quite well. Okay, so now let's look at the web app. Okay, so here we are in the various web app, all right? I'm gonna link the link to this down below in the description. But as you can see, it's the same UI as we've expected for various before. So we've got the compose and the refine tab. And we've got this part, which is upload image. And then overall, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste an example that I've used before. So just give me one second. So over here, I'm going to put this image in, right? I've used this on a previous video for D5 High. So let's see how well Virus does it. And for this prompt, I'm just going to say it's a modern shopping mall, concrete facade, large circular glazing, curtain wall glazing. No, uh, I mean, you guys can read this if you want. So overall, I'm just going to do the geometry override to... 15. I mean, let's use a fair example. I'm just going to do number of renderings to two. And by default, let's see what we get here, right? There is no material override, so I'm curious on what it's going to do here. But I mean, 100 is a probably good one because it's a black and white image. Let's see what we get. It is literally rendering the image that I've given it, right? Like, 
look at this part. This part I'm actually very surprised with, even this interior part, even the trees, right? But here, as we can see, the materials look a little bit ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the geometry override just a bit more, just so it doesn't follow my sketch too precisely. I'm going to say make it turbo nature and make it atmospheric. So now let's see what we get on here, right? Okay, so these are what I've gotten from my sketch. I mean, overall, I am just very surprised how well it follows the geometry. But one thing I don't like is the colors, but the colors could be my fault because I'm saying it's a concrete facade. So over here, I'm just going to say it's a red metal panel facade, right? And I'm going to say stunning sunset and I'm going to say vibrant colors. I'm just going to write Photoshop. I want to see how it interprets it. So now let's see what happens when I hit render. Okay, so for the web app, to be honest, it isn't on par with the other kind of competitors out there. I mean, I am very impressed with the actual CAD render plugin. I think that's the main thing of various. I think it's definitely the best one out there. This web app, uh, I think, I mean, it's definitely nailing the geometry. It's just in terms of materials, it's not really giving the best thing. I think maybe because it does expect some color, right? And to be honest, I think if most people upload a sketch, they aren't, it's mainly going to be like a line rate drawing, right? Or just something that's in black and white that they get from their sketchbook. So to be honest, let me see what else I can get. Okay, so I have one more example for it. And this is one that I've used previously quite a bit as well. And uh, the prompt is that it's a modern living room with a white ceiling and walls, sunlight coming from the windows, timber floors, and it's a got a luxury leather sofa, right? And I'm going to say vibrant colors on it. I want to see what colors it can actually generate for me, especially when the material overrides on 100%. Uh, let's help it out. Let me say for the floor, what have I got for the floor? Timber floors, I want to say with white ceiling and green walls. Let's see how it interprets green walls. That can be done in two different ways. So number of renderings, geometry override, fine, fine, fine. Let's hit render and see what we get from this time now, right? Okay, so in terms of reading geometry, I'd say it does a very good job at that, yeah? As you can see here, regardless of the materials. Materials, I think this is something that needs to be worked on. I think I've given it a few different examples for the web app. Uh, uh, I don't want to be uh, biased here, so it's a very unbiased opinion. I think, you know, feel free to try this at your own uh, leisure, but if you're using various, you know, I definitely recommend trying out various for actually being used in your CAD software, whether that's Revit or SketchUp or Rhino, right? If you do want to try the web app as a standalone, I'm sure they're going to improve it over time. When they do, I might post a video about it. But for now, I recommend using it on your uh, CAD software. As you can see, the stuff that we've generated here is absolutely insane. So yeah, that was the main features that I wanted to show you guys when it comes to Virus and the updates. If you guys did enjoy the video, I would very much appreciate it if you can leave a like. And that's it. Take care, guys. Cheers.